Devin, thanks for coming by. We appreciate it. No problem, man. No problem. Okay, so let me just start by asking you the thing that just developed overnight that we're fascinated by. That Brian Belichick is staying as safety coach. You know, and you obviously worked with him. You know this stuff well. You know all the particulars here well. And I just find it fascinating because on some level, Bill has to think that Gerard stabbed him in the back. And just on some level, you know, like Gerard took my job. But my son's going to go work for him. Like, how does that, how does that all work? I mean, I think it's interesting. I think from the outside looking in, I think we don't think about relationships that are built. And I think what people don't understand is Gerard came there in 2008 as a first-round draft pick, but then he got hurt. I think it was two years in a row, and he started with Steve Belichick sitting in there watching film together every single day. And he developed a relationship with Steve that then went over to Brian. And those guys all have their own relationship outside of Bill. And I think that has come to the forefront. And Gerard and Bill have their relationship. You've heard guys in the past talk about Bill. Gerard was like Bill's other son and all those things. So I think the business side, it, it came to a head and all of those things that transpired. But I think overall, the Mayo and Belichick, you know, family is still a really good relationship. And uh, I had spoken to Brian earlier and he was trying to make that decision uh, for his family and what was best. You know, we didn't know if Bill was going to get a job yet. Um, but I think for him being able to, you know, stay in New England, keep coaching there. And then now for him and Steve, everything they do won't be oh that's just bill bill's doing everything they're just there they'll start to be able to make a name for themselves i'm probably talking on my ass here but you already know that so the, when you look at it like part of me wonders when bill got let go whether part of the agreement was hey look just if my kids want to hang around give them the chance and then let them decide because he wanted to do, do you get the sense that there was any sort of concern on that part from bill about what would happen to his sons after he was gone I think he probably definitely thought about that. I think, you know, any of us being fathers, you're gonna you're gonna think about that. You get to hire your kids and work with them. You don't know what the next person is gonna do. Um, but again, I think it goes back to their performance, what they did, and then their own relationships was within the building. Because I don't think in the NFL, I don't think there's something you could be like, hey, do me this last solid and keep like I, I just don't think the NFL works like that. Obviously, his relationships and Bill and what he's done in this league will always open doors for them, get them interviews and different things like that. Steve's going to work with Jed. Jed was with us for a year in New England, so that relationship started that way. Um, but, no, I think for both of those guys, they put their own footprints. I've watched both of them grow because I was already there when Steve came. Then when Brian came, they both coached me at safety. So I've seen them grow and get better as coaches. So I think they've earned these opportunities. What happened with Bill? What happened? I just think time. I think everyone wants like this this game, like everybody's like in Germany, that this was a fun. I just think it was time. I think both sides were like, hey, we want to have a change. This is something that isn't sustainable. You think Bill wanted a change? I think he would have definitely went back, but I, I from being around Bill, I don't think there's any way he went, he goes back to, hey, you have to do things this way. Like, I don't I don't think that's in his DNA for him to let someone else tell him how to run a football team. So I think that's what the time aspect was of one side, I think, with ownership with the Kraft family, they were like, hey, this is we're not winning games at the level we wanted to. We're not winning games at any type of level. Um, when we look across the NFL and what we have here now feels a lot different than what's going on around the league. And that's their job as owners to make sure sure you continue to keep your team and hold a standard and I think for Bill you do something for a certain way for a long period of time and have unbelievable success why would you ever so they would have put restrictions on him they would have taken away personnel for example something like that I, I just think no matter what I think in this league when you don't win changes happen and for players that's normal every year we talk about that you guys go on the morning every go on show every day and you're like this guy won't be back he's think like that <laughs> happens and I think when that happens above us it's like this huge news and like as a player i'm like yeah the team didn't go like that's what you expect welcome like, to the exchange. nfl well, that's the way it goes and bill used to tell us that bill used to tell guys hey it sucks firing people i've been fired i've been on this transaction thing i've been fired as a head coach i've been fired as assistant coach i've done all of that so i fully understand and that to me is what happened what happened to the team how'd you go from being competitive every year to this bottom of the league starting over what happened I don't know. That's why I left and retired. <laughs> I, got out of I, I just think, I think the year before, I think we went eight and nine. I thought 
I thought we were a couple games away from only having four or five wins. A couple backup quarterbacks were in there, a couple things like that. And, you know, on the flip side, like in all football games, we were a couple wins away from having 12 wins. So uh, I just think that's how it goes. And for this year, this team, they were a couple bad plays from having eight or nine wins, but they didn't go that way. But they're not an eight or nine win team. This is what they are. Oh, but that's my thing. Like that thing, that that difference is so small. Last year, the Giants won a playoff game. They were in there. That team wasn't that much different this year. This year they weren't. And, you know, I know Daniel Jones got hurt, but that's the fine line. So you don't think they're that bad? No, I, I do. I mean, you, you are what you, you – that was my biggest thing. You are what your record is. Yeah. I, when we were 2-4 and four in 2021, it was like, we're 2-4, and four, but we're better than our record. No, you're not. You're not better than you. You are what you are. Until you go out there and win games, you're a 4-13 team. So when you come back this year, you're coming off a 4-13 season. Now you get to start 0-0, but – as the season goes on, if you don't win games, you're a bad football team. It just is what it is. Is Mac Jones' career salvageable with them? I mean, I think you have to see what, what obviously what Van Pelt thinks. Me personally, from knowing Mac, I would love to see him get an opportunity somewhere else. I think, I think as players, we're always like we're going to stay focused on what we have to do. We're going to lock in. But when every time you go out there on the field and you're going to get booed or you're going to get tough, like when that has to be your life day in and day out just to go line up and play, maybe not even start, but anytime you get close to playing, people are booing or people are talking, like that's just hard to deal with when you can go somewhere else, maybe be a backup for a year, maybe go with one of these quarterback guru type of offensive coordinators, build you back up. Like, I mean, Sam Darnold was in New York. Everyone thought, like, this is over with him. He's going to be a backup quarterback in the Super Bowl uh, Sunday. And I'm not saying Sam Darnold's the greatest quarterback ever, but, like, he's going to play football for a long time. And right now, everyone looks at Mac Jones like, get him out of the league. He's terrible. And I think if he gets a fresh start, we'll be still talking about this guy somewhere in the league five, six years from now. So it would benefit him to get out of New England is what you're saying. I I think so. I think think from – a teammate standpoint, you go through all of those ups and downs with your team. It's just like if he gets back in there at quarterback, what do they all think? Do they think like this is a guy from his rookie year? So now everybody else is wondering like, oh, man, how's he going to be? Like that's weird. Like we can't just go play football. And I think when you can't do that as a player, you can't be your best self. It, it, it's extremely hard when you're worried about all the other things. So you mentioned that, you know, Mike just asked you about how it deteriorated the way it did in New England. Are you surprised that it got it as bad as, as it did? You were there a long time, Devin. Yeah. Right, and things were pretty consistent. Even the bad years were mediocre. Right? So that to me is the key, though, what you just said. Things were pretty consistent everywhere, right? Coaching staff. Front, there was a consistency over the last few years in New England it hasn't been, right? There's three different offensive coordinators. You've had coaches leaving left and right doing different things. You've had guys like Nick Casario, Monty Asafor. Those guys have left. So how you replace those guys, how you were able to still flow and do things, I think we just saw everything finally kind of come to this, like, crash ending because everything was – it was just constant change, not just – we always talk about the players changing, but I thought there was changes everywhere else in the building that finally was like, hold on, like, we need to kind of reset. We need to do this all over again, put new guys in, put Gerard Mayo in there as head coach, put some newer people, give them maybe more say, maybe Elliot Wolf now, all the reports is he's having more say because of all the connections. So I think you're starting to see that, whereas, like, we just needed change. And now how can we be constant in the changes we made and start to build? Devin McCourty joining us here. Devin, now that you're out of the game, I want to ask you, what do you get asked the most by fans or say you're doing, like, a charity thing or I don't know if you golf, you're at a golf thing, and guys want to talk to you. It's sort of off the record, but... What, what's the number one question you get from your playing days if you're talking to a civilian or a person or someone like that? It's two things. It's Brady and Bill. Like, <laughs> now that's the number one thing. Who, who was it? Was it Brady or was it Bill? Like, like everyone asks me okay, that. Okay, well, I have one, but first answer that one. How do you answer that? Who was it? It's Bo- I, this is the thing that blows my mind. Bill Belichick gets killed more than anybody and says, well, he only won because he had Tom Brady. We watch every other coach coach these great quarterbacks. Right now, Andy Reid is Andy Reid's a great coach. He has Patrick Mahomes. Like that, that helps. Like good coaches very rarely win with bad quarterbacks. Like it just it just doesn't happen. And it, it just hurts him that he hasn't won without him. Yeah, no doubt about it. And like so, that's my thing too. Is Andy Reid not a good coach because he didn't win a Super Bowl without Patrick Mahomes? 
only because uh, well he got there and then people say well he got there and then we'll talk about somebody else and like he only got there he didn't win so then it's like why are you gonna keep moving the goalposts on us and that's my thing like Andy Reid is a phenomenal football coach why is he having this dynasty run now because he has a quarterback that is generational and I think Bill Belichick is a great coach his his only downfall is he didn't have a lot of years without Brady he got started in Cleveland which he gets ripped apart not many coaches have a, just a great start. And you just run through and you're having ultimate success right away. And then he got Tom. And then it was a year with Matt Castle where he won. And then we had a guy in our building for 20 years. And then you had to replace him. I look. I tell people all the time, I look at the Colts. When Peyton Manning got hurt, they were really bad. And what did they get the opportunity to do? Draft first and draft Andrew Luck. And that changed okay. everything. I'm getting the break sign. But listen, okay. so this would be my question. How come Malcolm Butler didn't play in that Super Bowl? I'm anxious. Malcolm Butler was Super Bowl last year. Are you saying you don't know? I have no idea. I don't believe you. <laughs> I tell people all the time, why hasn't Malcolm said that? Well, uh, I think Malcolm and Bill reached an agreement. Well, they... he has a, suppose he has a book coming out. Yeah, well, do you think he's going to tell all? I'm telling you, he called me. Quick story. I know we got to go break. He called me when he we'll signed back. We'll make time back. for the story. Yeah. He <laughs> called me when he came back, and he was like, hey, Belichick just called me. I might come back. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, oh, man, well, you took a year off. How you been? Like, but you would really come back here? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, but, like, well, you know, like, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> and he didn't say anything. So I'm like, okay, like, I, I guess whatever I So you're happened, saying, uh, listen, you obviously don't have to tell us. No, nobody but, but, ever. But are you saying you honestly don't know? The next year, me and, and Brian Flores, Flo, was a defensive coordinator. The next year, Matty P leaves. And he goes to me, I don't want what happened with Seattle, right? That team was the Seahawks was phenomenal. Right. We beat, we beat them in that Super Bowl, and that team never the same. crumbled Crumbled. apart. Yeah, they crumbled. And he says that to me, and I go, all right, cool, I agree with you. Well, what happened? Why didn't he play? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> like, I've never heard anyone talk about why he didn't play. It's I don't know. One of the last great stories. Big it, secret. It'll come out eventually. Devin, thanks for coming by. No problem. Thanks, you got a smile on your face. <laughs> you know more. No, I'm telling you. Yeah, you know more. If I knew, I wouldn't tell anyway, but I don't know. No, you're too good a guy to tell us is the problem. <laughs>